a normal day in the streets of Pune. But what am I doing in the city? Well, it turns out I am at the Persistent Systems office in the city. Persistent System is one of India's biggest technology companies. It supports chess, especially Vidit Gujarati. Just to give you an idea of how big the company is, its annual turnover in the year 2023 was 8,350 crores. Let's hear from Vidit on how Persistent Systems has supported him. I first met Anand sir when there was a talk held in Pune uh, where he was interviewing Vishwanathan Anand and it was a fascinating one hour talk. That's when I got introduced to him and I realized that he has a big passion for chess. And in 2021, I had made one of my big decisions to focus a lot on my professional career. And I was trying to build a team around me and looking out to play some top level events. And that's when uh, Anand sir came in uh, with a big sponsorship from uh, Persistent Systems. And since then, he has been supporting my journey. Even the most interesting part is that's when he started supporting me, it was one of my most unstable periods where I was having shaky results and he believed in me back then and after two years I could win the Grand Swiss and qualify to candidates so there was a constant support throughout and I'm very grateful and the support continues because now I'm going to candidates and he has been helping me in every way possible so I'm deeply grateful uh, to Persistent Systems and Anand sir for you know believing in me when it was my down phase and uh, hopefully I can uh, you know make them proud with my performance thanks a lot uh, uh, Persistent Systems and Anand sir and hence, it gives me immense pleasure to present before you this interview with the chairman of the Persistent Systems, Mr. Anand Deshpande, a man with a vision for tech in India and love for chess. I'm here with uh, Anand Deshpande, the chairman of Persistent Group. Anand, uh, pleasure to meet you here at your office. What a beautiful uh, place you've built. Thanks, Sagar. It's a real pleasure to talk to you on this camera. Um, appreciate you coming over and uh, I'm glad you could make it today. Uh, Anand, your involvement in chess uh, is seen through the chess world in terms of Vidit. Uh, you've sponsored Vidit, I think it's been close to three years now that you've been supporting him. Would that be right to say or were you also connected to chess before him? No, actually I have worked, see I, the, my in, uh, introduction to chess happened almost 15 years back, meaning chess sponsorship. That happened through uh, Nitin Kareer first and uh, with Abhijit Kunte. And uh, at that point, uh, you know, we were part of Persistent and he kind of talked me into doing laptops for young chess players. So actually Vedit got one of the laptops when, his, when he was, I think, a school kid. And few other people who actually went on to do really well uh, got in there. And then Abhijit Kunte is a friend because he lives close by. His kids were, my wife is a school teacher, or was a school teacher. She was, uh, her, Abhijit's kids were in the, her class. So we got to know him well and I, I really like him. He's a very sweet guy. And when he, when he asks for something, then it's usually very hard to say no. <laughs> so when he came to me with, with it, uh, he said, I, I, let's help him. He really needs some boost. So I, so I agreed because, yeah, I meaning it was a combination of Vidit, who is also a very sweet guy, and Abhijit is another sweet guy. So it was more uh, in that context rather than anything else. But your uh, involvement in chess is not just as a sponsor. You know, you're following uh, Vidit's every kind of development, what is happening. You're involved in his journey. Yeah, I, mean, I like tracking all kinds of sports. And yes, I track Vidit and other chess tournaments. And uh, I've been tracking Vishy and others as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like watching all kinds of sports. Talking about Vishy, I remember the yes. first time I saw you was when you did this fireside chat with him, Correct. Anand with Anand. Yes. It was one of the most uh, eye-opening kind of chats uh, with so many new insights that Vishy revealed there. I think uh, it was very memorable, maybe for you as well. Yes, very much. You know, uh, I was very stressed before that uh, show. 
that also happened through Abhijit. Abhijit was inviting him here to Pune and he was doing an event and uh, he asked me to sponsor a little bit. So I did and then he said, okay, I'll give you an opportunity to talk to him on stage. We'll invite everyone together. So I said, yeah, fine. But I was not sure what to talk to him and uh, it took me a lot, a lot of work to figure out what to ask. But more importantly, I also spent a lot of time with him before to make sure that, you know, he's comfortable. Because he's very, um, very much into chess. He, mm. he just gets into the game and the board. And I'm a complete outsider. I was trying to ask him how chess relates to business and things like that. But, um, you know, it, it was good, very memorable. It's not very often that you meet somebody like his caliber. He's an amazing guy, really. Meaning he is very, uh, very sweet and very, very down to earth, very easy to get along with kind of a world champion. And he has very, he has no airs, and he was, he was very, very, he's, he's so focused in the game. It's so much to learn from him. Yeah, it's been close to six years now yes. since that happened. I still remember one of the things he spoke about changing his repertoire from D4 to E4. And he said, <laughs> sometimes companies have to shift without the need for having to switch, just so that they can uh, sort of Stay expand the further. Element. Yeah. And uh, this still is in my head and, uh, you know, that shows uh, it was very, very valuable back then what the talk was. Um, talking about Vidit, uh, he is now in the candidates. You also had a chat with him. There are regular events which happen in Persistent. What is it about him that, that you like a lot? I, I find Vidit, Vidit is a very thoughtful guy. He's, a, of course, a very sweet guy, but more importantly, he thinks a lot. He also, I found that for him and his kind of a situation, he reflects a lot about oh, why did I win, how did I lose, how did I come back and uh, he, he's very well read, very well thought of and a thinker in some sense rather than just a brute force player. So I like that about him and when you ask him questions, he's very thoughtful about his answers and he has uh, very good reasons for everything that he's doing, which I find to be quite good also. He's quite funny as well. So that also helps, you know, so he is much easier to talk to than potentially talking to Vishy actually. <laughs> <laughs> but when uh, one thing that Vidit uh, told me about and I got to know is that you've kind of supported him not just in his journey, but also for the candidates, you mentioned that, you know, any support that he needs, you are ready to be there to help him. This kind of uh, approach is not very common. I don't know, I just found that he's, uh, he was a little hassled in the sense that he had a lot in his plate because he was trying to prepare for the candidates and he he had to you know bring in a lot of things bring money sponsors all those things so i was trying to just help him saying that you know uh, you just focus on the chess we want you to win <laughs> and all the other things are easy for us to take care and help him out with so we will help you with anything else you need but you know he's well accomplished guy he has his own network and setup so i don't think he has Ask for a whole lot of help, but you know we want him to win, and if we can uh, remove his other painful things so that he's not distracted and he gets the time to think and be focused, I think it'll be good and it will be so nice to have him win. Wonderful. Do you yourself play chess? Like, uh, what <laughs> would be your online strength like? No, I have played chess, yes, but I am not. I have not really studied chess. Let me say it that way. But do you play still, like online? No, I don't play online. Ah, you don't play anymore? No, I have played when, you know, I've played with kids and other things, but I have not been playing regularly. For you, building persistent all over these years, now that you no longer are the CEO, you've taken kind of a, uh, another role, another yes. turn in your life Yes. Uh, to dedicate yourself to different things. But first, the persistent journey from that, what do you think can the world of chess or the chess ecosystem learn? Because you've not only scaled a business to a huge one, but you've also helped to grow the ecosystem of the IT sector. You've been part of many organizations, NASCOM, um, the other ones over there. So if there's something that you think, because chess is right now in this phase where it's a growing sort of yes. a sport. So... Uh few things I think uh, I can share. One is that uh, what I've been saying everywhere is that businesses go through these S-curves. So you do certain things, you see growth and you flatten out. And when you reach that 
plateau, you have to do something different. You can't just keep pushing the same thing. I find that with sports and with chess also somewhat similar situation. So if you keep doing the same things, you get stuck in a, in a rut in some sense and you cannot improve and grow. So at that point, you have to sort of say, okay, now I need to take the next orbit. So I need to take a fresh look. Uh, re reimagine different things, maybe think very differently, bring in different coaches, different ideas, different strategies. So all of those things are very common in business. Something similar like that, I think happens in sports and chess as well, which I've seen, especially with Vidit as well. As you would notice, he kind of transformed himself yes. a few times in the last three to four years. And uh, he's been thinking differently. It's not the same Vidit that he was, say, five years back. So you can see that, that transformations are these S-curves and journeys, a multiple year thing. The other thing I find is that, you know, yeah, I mean, you can have a very great flash year once, but if you want to be, uh, it takes time and it, you have to keep at it for many years to really build a reputation and to really be, be the kind of the leader in the market. So if you look at Vishy, for example, it's not just one year that, you know, he's done it. He's been consistently improving every year for many, many years. So at Persistent also now, you can see that we are a fairly large company, but the company is 34 years old. Mm -hmm. So I started in 1990, right? So it takes a long time. If you asked us 10 years back, in 1990 to first 10 years, we were a very small business into 2000. But, uh, you know, it just takes time and you have to keep at it. And then I always tell everyone that, you know, the, our name is a very nice thing for everyone to know. Uh, if you have to succeed in anything, you have to be persistent. And uh, that's very true. Like, if you think about it, and this is very true in sports. So if you see the difference between those who win and those who don't, everyone who has won now has lost many times before, right? And every time you would have easily packed off and gone home saying, forget it, I'm done, right? Those who keep coming back are the ones who succeed. And this is true in business as well. So there are so many times when you feel like it's not working out and you feel like, you know, packing off and going or saying that, no, man, this is not for me or any of those kinds of things. And you have days when you when you feel like you're down and out, but uh, those who succeed are those who come back. So the ability to keep coming back or being persistent is something that I find uh, very relevant. Did it happen to you uh, oh, ever times. that you felt like I should sort of... No, I, I didn't. I mean, in the early years, yes, it was pretty tough. There are many times when you feel like, you know, am I really in the right job? Am I going to win these deals? You know, I may not be the right one. Everyone of us has that little bit of that imposter syndrome where you feel like you may not be the right place. But, uh, you know, you have to kind of hold yourself and keep coming back. And being persistent has been a big thing that I find very useful. The other thing I would mention right now, especially since we are talking young, young people and all that, I think uh, it's very important to think that we right now are in uh, 2024. Most of the kids that are in the game are all born after 2000. And most of those people who are born after 2000, there's a good chance that they're going to see 2100, 2100, <laughs> year of 2100. <laughs> and when you look at that, 100 years to come, 75 years of, you know, they'll live 100, they'll have to work till they're 80. And the, and the way technology is moving and where all the other things are moving, it's very rapid changes. So under these circumstances, I think it's very important to be learning all the time. Because mm -hmm. you don't know what's coming, but whatever comes, you need to be ready for it. So the key is to, you know, be learning all the time. And that is where I think uh, all of us need to do it, including chess players. In, in this world, when we don't know what's happening, a lot of things are changing. Technology is moving exponentially. A lot of new things are coming in. So to survive, to learn is very important. And uh, those who can learn all the time, I think they are the ones who will succeed. And uh, one of the things that I find with games like chess and other things, it puts you in a different context, it forces you to try new things, and it helps you learn in different ways. And I think some of that learning can be applied to other walks of life as well, whether you are in software programming or anything else. So mm. The fact that you're learning all the time, new things coming in, new tools are there. Uh, I think these are very useful things. So I really like what you do, Sagar, with the fact that you have all these uh, young children that you are inspiring to play chess and chess plus the fact that they learn how to get better at chess helps them get better at other things in life as well. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, one thing which really inspired me about you is the fact that you are in so many different places yeah. at the same time. 
and i would imagine <laughs> that a person like you <laughs> should should not have time to do so many things uh, uh, yet and it's not just now that you but i think since quite some time you've been doing yeah. this see i really believe that you know um, we are a we are a networked world so we are a community and the community helps each other and you if you want to benefit from the community you have to give to the community so it's a ecosystem right when you, when you need help you need to you need friends you need mentors you need people who can you can go to to ask for help and if you have to go to them for help people don't help you just because you ask for them you yeah it's important but it's a it's a network so if you have to get from the network you have to give to the network so i've always believed in that i always enjoy meeting people learning from different things and i find that you can learn when you are in a different environment you learn very differently so i think i find that very valuable and uh, i like meeting people i find learning through other people is a very good way so if i'm part of some community i'm at nascom or some other event i always find there is something new and different that i can pick from there and i can apply it to some other areas so i i must say i do it for very selfish reasons but i really enjoy uh, being part of all these communities and networks and meeting friends and uh, listening to people and uh, learning from every one of them one thing that has been spoken a lot recently and also in chess but also outside is ai yes and uh, what is your take on it because there are a lot of people a lot of such things that must have come up in your journey yes. over the last 3 decades do you think it's going to stay do you think it's going to go away what is your feeling no i think chess uh, ai is real okay i think ai has gotten really good and ai is going to be a all pervasive tool in some sense and it's going to change the way we we do things in life in future so i think ai is very important and everyone must embrace ai because you cannot avoid it and i find chess has been a very interesting example that i find about how ai has so so let me stay there for long so in the mid 90s right when uh, the ibm uh, chess machine went and beat kasparov at that point everyone felt that now the computer has gotten better than most humans and very soon it was very clear that even a pc with the right software can beat most grandmasters most yes. of the time so chess has uh, computers have already now started to beat grandmasters hands down very consistently now one would have imagined that chess would be dead because what is there to play there is nothing left right now you every time you're going to lose to yes. the computer but if you see the quality of games the quality of chess the new moves that have come in ai and computing has really helped chess in a very big way it has made it very popular so yes. chess while while ai might seem adversarial in some sense that it has killed the competition right meaning the world champion if you let computers play the first 200 players would be some computer programs there's no chance for any humans but still the human game has become even more exciting right now because of chess because of ai and all of these kind of things so i i think um, this is going to happen everyone will get a copilot or some tool that will help them improve their productivity in a big way a lot of our mundane jobs can be done very easily through ai improving those jobs getting them to you end to end so i think that's very important and i think everyone needs to think about how to leverage ai because if you don't someone else will mm-hmm. and uh, you know a lot of people complain that you will miss out on some skills because with ai you wouldn't know need those skills but i like to share a story around um, when calculator started to happen so i was in uh, first year in engineering in 79 in iit and uh, at that point we were not allowed to use calculators for exams and uh, we had to use log tables okay <laughs> no, i have used it so I, you know what i know it is important so first year we had to use log tables by the time we came to the second semester the war was lost everybody decided forget it it's not viable everyone must get calculators and we were all asked to go buy calculators within the three month period between you know so the next exam you have to use calculators but there was so much debate about the fact that you will not be able to use log tables <laughs> because you are now using calculator i'll not be able to use log table i'll lose this capability of using log tables yes i can't use log tables anymore but so what <laughs> no one no one remembers log <laughs> tables anymore yeah I mean, it's good to know but uh, the fact that i don't use log tables has not stopped me from doing anything useful right so maybe uh, i will uh, always use a copilot or a grammarly or something else to write and my uh, you know 
letters might look more polished because I have AI fight them. But then people will get used to it. You know, people will expect that to happen. Today you don't accept any spelling mistakes and the fact that word is spelling spelling checking you every time and now checking grammar and everything else. Now people are expecting more. So I think quality of things will improve and change. But I think AI is is here. It's for real and everyone needs to embrace it. Fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, it's very important because everywhere we see it's uh, AI talks are happening Correct. and I think what you mentioned is very useful. Um, right now, you are into many things that you do. You are into Second Orbit, you are yeah. into D Asra Foundation. There's also something related to biotech yeah. uh, that you are doing. So what is it that you find the most exciting right now in this phase of your life? So, um, yeah, I mean, I moved off being CEO about almost five years back. And uh, when I was CEO at Persistent, I was full on just doing Persistent and everything that was related to Persistent and pretty much your focus is, you know, next quarter and the quarter after that. But now I'm sort of thinking more longer term. So I'm trying to see what are the problems that are important worth solving over the next 20, 30 years and focusing a lot on them. So one set of issues that I'm working on relating to entrepreneurship have come from the fact that I think jobs and employment is going to be a big issue. And more and more we are heading into a gig economy where people will do self-employment will be a big part. So in the Asra we work with very small businesses. We call them nano entrepreneurs, but they're really gig workers. These are people who make between five lakh and one crore. And we have an ecosystem to help all these very tiny businesses succeed. And almost, uh, we have now nearly 300,000 businesses that we have worked with in this model. Any business, But yes. the market is huge. Any business. Photographers, food counters, dance class. You know, pick any of these kind of things. Very small businesses. One person. Me and my two people. They're very, very tiny things. But that's really where most of the jobs are in mm. India, actually. So that's what I've been working on. And I think uh, there's a lot of these kinds of jobs that are going to happen. And I'm quite excited about what can be done here. Uh, and the, the numbers are very large. So we have done 300,000. But... Relax is a very small number as compared to the need. So we're trying to see how to scale to 10 lakhs. The other thing that we are working, that I like working on is what we call second orbit. So yes. here what happens is that the founder, when they run their company, they take it to a point, but then it tends to plateau out. So how do you help form the founders professionalize their company so that they can bring other partners, bring other colleagues and scale the business? So I've been working a lot on that aspect as well. And that is also quite exciting. On the bio side, uh, you know, I got in, invited or somehow got involved in this whole thing that uh, in India right now we are almost 16% uh, of the world population. Um, but all our medical treatments are on the basis of data coming from outside India. So if you have cancer treatment, you'll find that the treatment is coming on the basis of data sets from outside India. So we need our own data sets for our own people so that we can find treatments for our people. And I think something needs to be done on that. And that's how I got involved in that. And I think uh, through that, I've been now uh, co-chair of something called BRIC, which is the Biotechnology Research and Innovation Council. And I really believe in the last few years, bio, biology and engineering have come together. And uh, next generation of biology is all about engineering in some, some way. And uh, biology is going to become a very important part of food, water, energy, you know, plants, medicines, animals, everything that you think about, there'll be some next generation of bio that can influence it. So I think there's a lot of hope and I'm really supporting India to think hard about some of these areas so that we can uh, think about how to do research in these areas. And uh, I really believe that, you know, in general, in India, we are not uh, playing to our potential in the research area. So we are doing very well in deployment of new technologies or technologies, but we are not inventing these technologies as much. So I've been trying to see how to support researchers in computer science or in biology to see how we can look at the frontiers of what needs to come. And as a country where we'll be the third largest economy in the world, we should play to that level of, I mean, we need that leadership, not just in the number of people, but also in the quality of work that we do. And that's what I'm very excited about. So, you know, one thing that I see when I interact with you is that you are passionate about things, but when you speak about them, you are very much calm about it. Also very simple in your words, very to the point. Uh, I read one article in which it was mentioned you reached 
uh, a place for some work in an auto rickshaw and at that point they wrote that you know being a billionaire he is coming in an auto rickshaw this sort of simplicity in everything you do is that is this something that that comes to you naturally yeah obviously right meaning i'm not thinking about this i'm a billionaire by chance <laughs> in a sense that the stock price of my company share has done very well so that's what makes me you know a billionaire in that sense but no i don't think about it you know we have all lived a certain lifestyle and we are quite happy with it and if you live in pune and if you have to go somewhere you know, no point in going by car right skill <laughs> rickshaw works well i also drive a nano i find it easier wherever rickshaw goes nano goes so yeah I meaning it's just easy life is simple keep it by complicated But it never changed. Your lifestyle never changed based on. No, not in a real way. Meaning, yeah, we are spending more on travel now than we used to. But yeah. Fantastic. Any books that you would recommend to us that sort of touched you can be used for youngsters who, of course, uh, read many chess books. But apart from chess, <laughs> that they can read uh, can be helpful to them. Yeah. I am um, there are lots of books that uh, one can read uh, I track a lot of people on an ongoing basis and I I have many re- books I read at the same time I'll tell you the books I have gifted the most as as good good sounding points of books that can be quite interesting so uh, one of the books that I have gifted the most is this book by Ram Charan called what every ceo wants you to know I find that to be a very nice book on cash flows and i recommend it to anybody who is running a business or anywhere you are working at various things i find that to be very useful i also found this book um, called designing your life to be very valuable i've been thinking a lot about careers jobs and things like that and i find uh, this book to be also pretty good um then you know more recently i've been uh, gifting a lot of people three or four books one of them is this book which i found quite interesting is a book recently written by arnold schwarzenegger uh, he talks about seven things you should do or something like that and i heard him on a podcast and he was very hilarious and interesting and i really liked that book i also re- read recently the sudha murthy narayan murthy love story yes. book which is also quite nicely done actually i found that to be good and then uh, I've been also gifting a lot of people this Peter Attia book called Outlive. Um, yeah, meaning so there is a lot of books that I read and I listen to a lot of podcasts and then from podcasts I go to the book and then I book at the book I used to buy them and keep them on the shelf. But now I've moved to Kindle, so it's much easier. It's all on all my devices and I can refer to them when I need to. And uh, yeah, meaning I have many books open at the same time. I'm, If I have to study something, then I connect many books at that point. Amazing. Well, uh, what we can say is uh, thank you for being part of the chess ecosystem in some way uh, that you are through with it, and I think it's uh, very nice uh, the contribution you made, uh, and I think it may grow in the years. Yeah, to let's go. hope uh, with it does very well, and we hope it. Hope you will be there, the perhaps. Yeah, maybe we'll see how it works. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, we are in the US around that time, so it is possible. But I, I just want him to focus on the game, right? Forget about us. I'll come and see you. I'll let him do what he has to do. But I hope he wins the uh, this uh, candidates tournament, so we can have him really go after the world championship as well. And uh, I just want to thank you, Sagar, for all what you do. Okay, you are uh, really a greatest ambassador for chess. I am as much a fan of you and your work and we have met now 3 4 times and I find that every time I meet you I am so refreshed I find that you are such a great missionary for chess and the work you do and your vision also right me you are this is your love and passion clearly but you are not just you've kind of figured out a way to make a profession out of it and not just that you're making it not just for yourself but for a whole band of friends and followers who are all like big part of you thing so you know hats off to you I, i i think we need more people like you who are so passionate about what they do and they are able to figure things out and get things going 
So you are the greatest servant of chess in some sense, in the, and I use servant in the right word, not oh. necessarily in a bad way, but you now you are someone who is serving, serving chess in a very big way. So thanks for what you do. Thank you so much for these kind words, and uh, I'm glad that uh, you think this way. <laughs>